policy in action. Asia Securities offers a comprehensive suite of financial and investment solutions. In complex financial markets, deep knowledge and insights are essential to uncovering the story within the story. The hidden risks. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, to speak to you on policy in action. Step changes in the ease of doing business in Sri Lanka. Please welcome Mr. Pasan Vanigasekara, Director General of the Board of Investment. Ms. Vanigasekara, over to you. On behalf of the Board of Investment, the Chamber of Commerce and the Columbus Stock Exchange, let me warmly welcome you to the Sri Lanka Investor Forum and this session on the ease of doing business in Sri Lanka. As the apex body entrusted with investment promotion into the country, the Board of Investment has long appreciated the importance of the ease of doing business. The government has accordingly embarked on an ambitious journey to bring about exponential changes, to bring about leapfrog improvements in the ease of doing business in the country. I have here with me the Secretary to the State Ministry of Money and Capital Markets and State Enterprise Reforms, which has been entrusted with championing the initiatives, which are RMP of NIAC. The initiatives cover various aspects from startup to seamlessly running a private enterprise. In terms of setting up shop, things such as company incorporation, securing property, procuring utilities, as well as securing credit matter. During commercial operations, trading across borders, paying taxes, enforcing contracts, as well as ensuring minority interests are some of the things that concern. As such, various stakeholders and agencies need to get involved in the task of state ministry, headed by Honorable Ajit Niwad Kadra, pay-headed the huge task of coordinating and monitoring of this national effort. Mr. Secretary, please speak a little bit about the initiatives that your ministry has taken and how your ministry went about coordinating this, uh, so many agencies that are involved. Yeah, uh, yes, Pasan. Uh, our ministry has taken a number of uh, steps to uh, facilitate and uh, implement these uh, reforms in a well-coordinated manner. Under the guidance of uh, Minister, uh, Honorable Minister Ajit Nivant Kabral, we brought all the respective line agencies into a round table and discussed their reform agenda. And then we uh, prepare a time-bound action plan for each and every uh, reform. Not only that, we closely uh, monitor the implementation progress of these uh, reforms uh, in order to uh, achieve those targets within the agreed uh, timeline. Uh, in the short run, uh, we uh, basically focus on um, eight uh, indices out of the 10 you have mentioned. And um, actually our uh, aim was to simplify the processes and uh, shorten the, the, the processing time and the uh, reduction of the transaction cost. Uh, I think uh, with that initiative, uh, we were able to uh, complete number of uh, reforms in the, these uh, targeted uh, areas. And uh, we will highlight uh, all these reforms in our final submission to the World Bank. And uh, all these reforms are very important to uh, build up uh, business-friendly environment in this country. And uh, accordingly, uh, we hope that our country ratings will uh, go up. I understand, Mr. Ratnayaka, that some of these changes, the relevant line agencies have been able to accelerate, resulting in the country being able to make a leapfrog uh, movement in the country rankings in the ease of doing business index. Now, let's talk a little bit more in detail because we have identified out of the 10 areas, we have identified eight areas of key focus. And within those eight, we have identified specific action items where we can make quick wins. And these initiatives, I, I understand, have been 
uh, uh, in operation since 2020 uh, and going on to the early part of this year, which should reflect, some of them should reflect in our rankings, hopefully giving us a push, maybe about 15, 20 notches. Right. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, when it's come to the, the different indicators, the first uh, indicator is starting business. That's uh, measure how simple the co company registration process in a country. Now, uh, in Sri Lanka, we have introduced the new uh, ERO, EROC system. That's an online system uh, which connects with the, uh, all relevant uh, agencies like uh, Internet Revenue Department, uh, Department of Labor, uh, Central Bank, uh, EPF uh, Section, etc. And the system uh, facilitates uh, sharing of information among these agencies uh, uh, on real-time basis. And uh, now an investor can uh, uh, register his company within one day by submitting uh, one uh, application. Once the company registrar approved and uh, issued a registration number, this data set uh, transfers to the other agencies, uh, Internal Revenue Department and the Department of Labor and the Central Bank to issue the other uh, requirements, I mean the uh, wet registration number, TIN number and the EPF number, etc. So, uh, Prior to uh, implementation of this, this uh, EROC system, uh, we have to follow uh, uh, at least seven procedures to uh, get the registration done. And it took about uh, eight days, uh, but now uh, it takes only one day to complete the entire registration process. That's amazing. Exactly. down now. Uh eight days to one day, exactly. and the integration of these uh, mm -hmm. various line agencies. Um, let's move on to construction. Now, I understand that um, some of the local authorities uh, have opened up a single window, especially the Colombo Municipal Council, um, the, the local authority in the capital city, and uh, the, the ability to submit just one application instead of various uh, applications and that too online submissions how has that helped uh, improve the ease of doing business yeah person if i remember uh, early days it was mandatory to obtain uh, three certificates uh, non vesting certificate ownership certificate and the building and street line certificate from uh, colombo municipal council uh, that's the approving authority of the uh, colombo city uh, prior to start any uh, kind of a construction now the Colombo Municipal Council has uh, uh, reduced the uh, uh, number of certificates required and uh, they provide their service via a single uh, window uh, counter they have established using a single application uh, without any cost. Uh, in addition, this indicator uh, uh, covers the, the, the how easy to obtain a water connection also. Right. Now, uh, we have amalgamated the steps relating to obtaining uh, uh, water uh, connections. The water board has introduced uh, a single application form to uh, provide the water connection. Anyone can submit now uh, the application to get uh, the water connection. And the uh, system uh, integrated with the online uh, payment uh, system uh, also. So, uh, these reforms all together reduce the uh, number of steps to complete from uh, 13 in uh, 2020 to uh, 10 in 2021. So that's a, that's a uh, good achievement. And uh, number of actions, as you can see in the screen, are in the pipeline. And uh, once we complete all these uh, numbers, uh, we can further uh, improve the, the system. Right. And, and, and these reforms, in terms of time, how much time has it been able to cut down? I think uh, in the early days, uh, it took about uh, 86 days. And uh, once we complete all this uh, process, uh, uh, we will be able to uh, cut down at least uh, 30 days. Oh, so, uh, almost one third. Exactly, yes. Great. Um, moving on to property registration. 
Um, again, I, th I, I believe there is a digitization process involved with the uh, land registry. And um, again, a single window where um, applications can be submitted and the issuance is also uh, digitized. And, the, uh, and the, we, we seem to have an ambitious target of a single day of uh, registration. Yeah, Colombo Municipal Council uh, uh, has launched this uh, online uh, land register uh, ELR uh, system, converting the manual process into the, the electronic uh, form. And uh, the service is now uh, provided through the single uh, window count uh, I mentioned uh, earlier. Now, earlier the investor has to physically uh, come to the uh, uh, Colombo Municipal Council and wait uh, a long time to uh, get the, uh, the ownership certificate. But now they can uh, receive the certificate as soon as uh, uh, the land gets registered at the Colombo uh, Land Registry. Uh, looking uh, forward, uh, we also uh, planning to introduce an uh, independent uh, complaint uh, filing mechanism and tracking uh, uh, mechanism at the Registrar General uh, Department. So with all these improvements, uh, we have been able to cut down the time required for land registration uh, substantially. Let's move on to credit. Um, I believe the Central Bank has been able to introduce uh, improved credit scoring team, which sort of trickles into improving the risk management at lending institutions. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, this area also we have achieved a good uh, progress. Uh, the Credit Information Bureau has implemented the credit scoring uh, system. And now all borrowers, uh, either individual or corporate, uh, can uh, now obtain their credit scores uh, without any uh, trouble and the information relating to uh, obtaining these scores are available in the uh, TRIB uh, website. Now, in addition to that, TRIB has also introduced a fast-track uh, credit evaluation and the fund disbursement uh, for lending institution. Uh, this is an improvement of uh, risk management process uh, at banks and the lending institution as you correctly mentioned. Uh, uh, I believe you uh, refer to the Credit Information Bureau? Right. Right. Sorry, you were saying? Yeah, I mean, uh, we can uh, further improve the, the strength of uh, legal right index uh, by uh, bringing reforms to uh, bank up Sri Law, and uh, this action is also in our cards. So uh, with those uh, improvements, I think uh, we can achieve a, a remarkable uh, progress in this area also. Let's move on to paying taxes, something I believe no individual or corporate would want to, but necessity in reality. Some, an area where we seem to have made significant changes leading to improvement in the ease of doing this, especially when it comes to um, e-filing of returns as well as e-payments. And the best news is the abolition, abolition of several taxes. Yeah. Please talk about how, how these have uh, created a better doing business yeah. environment. Yeah, you are correct, person. Uh, actually, our plan is to uh, implement a, a fully automated uh, tax payment uh, system. It's simplified and uh, uh, predictable uh, tax regime. Uh, with the implementation of a new tax regime and uh, reforms uh, recently, we were able to uh, reduce the number of uh, payments per year from uh, 36 to 9, cutting down uh, 27 uh, wow. payments. And I think uh, this is a good uh, improvement. Uh, as you uh, mentioned, uh, with the abolition of uh, nation building tax, the number of payments per year reduced by uh, 12. And then um, combining uh, monthly VAT payments to one annual payment has resulted in a reduction of another uh, 11 uh, payments. And uh, payment reforms in uh, corporate taxes also reduce the number of uh, payments by another uh, four payments. 
So altogether, as I mentioned, uh, we have cut down uh, 27 payments. And uh, introduction of e-service to uh, file uh, company return and e-filing uh, of income return also reduced uh, the time to comply, number of procedures and uh, cost to the taxpayers. Uh, so all in all, some of these changes should uh, give a, a significant push exactly, yes, to yes. Sri Lanka's ranking yeah, up yeah. the uh, ease of doing business. Yeah. In addition, uh, an online payment platform for ATV has also been uh, introduced by the central bank. It's, it's very heartening to see some of these changes, especially during this pandemic era, where the government machinery seems to have adopted a digitization to ease uh, the process of engaging uh, those government agencies. Uh, let's move on to trading, uh, cross-border trading. Uh, I believe this is no exception where dig digitization has uh, taken a firm uh, place in its operations with online registrations, submissions, approvals, as well as notifications of those approvals. And in fact, I believe that it has resulted in almost a 50% uh, improvement. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, now, uh, doing business uh, index uh, measures the time and cost associated with uh, three sets of uh, procedures. Uh, documentary uh, compliance, uh, border uh, compliance, and the uh, mm -hmm. domestic uh, transport. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we can see a good uh, progress in uh, all these areas. Sri Lanka Customs uh, has developed an online system for um, custom uh, declaration. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and notification, uh, electronic uh, trader registration, and uh, submission of uh, electronic uh, manifest. And they have introduced a SMS uh, system now to notify the assessment status to the, the exporter. And also a world best custom data uh, system is now available with them. And it links with the, uh, the other relevant uh, the government. World? Exactly, Asikuda world system. Uh, linked with the other relevant uh, government agencies. So uh, you can see the time taken uh, for different steps have uh, come down uh, drastically with the implementation of these uh, digital uh, systems. Right. One area, other area where investors would be keen is probably to secure their investment by way of being able to enforce contracts, right? Now, I believe on the legal front, the Just Ministry of Justice has also implemented uh, several um, changes, um, introducing again uh, online um, filing and submissions, as well as uh, the Supreme Court has moved into online hearings. Um, again, uh, bringing about radical changes to the systems and processes, resulting in um, further reduction of uh, delays and the processes involved? Yeah, enforcement of contracts. Uh, now, this is an area uh, the Sri Lanka was uh, lagging uh, behind. And we need to give a little more attention uh, to uh, improve the system. I know that the, the Minister of Justice uh, uh, is currently implementing a, a very ambitious uh, reform program to address uh, these uh, current issues. One important uh, development, as you mentioned, uh, is the uh, Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal has uh, started the virtual hearing now. So the uh, facilities are now available for electronic uh, filing of uh, the applications, motions and other uh, documents. Now, uh, as you can uh, see in the screen, there are a number of activities in the, uh, the pipeline and uh, with the uh, implementation of uh, these uh, all these uh, programs, we can uh, significantly improve uh, the, the situation under this uh, enforcement of contract. Great, and I believe it's almost half the target. Yes, our long-term yes. target is roughly to... about half. Yes, right. Let's move on to the crown jewel in Sri Lanka's portfolio of uh, opportunity for investment. Port City. As you know, Port City will be a trade and commerce hub, logistics, marine hub, 
hospitality and leisure hub complete with marina and theme leisure parks. But most importantly, from a um, corporate perspective, we want to position it for regional headquarters. Um, Sri Lanka geographically lies in the heart of, if you park aside the west of the Atlantic to take the rest of the world, Sri Lanka lies at the center of that uh, part of the world right. with access to over 2 billion people in the west, east coast of Africa, Mideast, um, South Asia, East Asia, etc. So, Port City is going to be a special economic zone where ease of doing business is going to be on par with other regional hubs such as Singapore, Hong Kong, Dubai, etc. Let's focus on some of the initiatives with uh, the Port City. Yeah. Uh, Hassan, uh, Kalabu Port City is the largest uh, foreign uh, direct investment in Sri Lanka. And uh, it has the potential to reshape our economy and also to uh, generate uh, new opportunities for uh, regional development. But in order to get the, the investment into the, the port city, uh, you have to create an investor-friendly uh, business environment uh, in the port city. So I think uh, that's why the government has uh, proposed the, uh, the uh, Port City Economic Commission uh, with wide range of powers to oversee the development of uh, Port City as a special uh, economic zone, as you uh, correctly mentioned. Uh, Port City law is one of the important investment-related uh, laws in uh, Sri Lanka uh, recently uh, passed. The Port City Commission uh, is to function um, as a single window investment facilitator in relation to uh, registration, issuing licenses and approval for business entities in the special uh, economic zone um, area. So if you uh, look at the, the, the provisions that support uh, achieving uh, these set targets, uh, the Port City Commission is empowered to make rules and uh, exercise all powers relating to uh, development control within the Port City area. And uh, there will be an uh, the state manager who will assist in uh, providing uh, utility services uh, such as gas, water, electricity, internet and uh, communication, uh, sewerage, drainage, uh, etc. And uh, in relation to uh, registering of properties, again, the Port City Commission uh, authorized to uh, play a role of uh, condominium uh, management authority for uh, apartment uh, to be constructed uh, within the, the area. And the acts uh, also uh, requires uh, local courts uh, to give priority to any legal proceedings uh, instituted on uh, civil and uh, commercial matters arising uh, from a course of action within the uh, port city area. So I think uh, with all these facilities, uh, port city will uh, promote investment and uh, act as a boost to uh, economic growth in our country. Thank you, Mr. Ratnayaka. That was indeed an eye-opener. Transforming a country's economy requires long-term vision, but also pragmatic steps and bold actions. Business enterprises are the lifeline of any economy. Sri Lanka, being no different, has a long-term plan to transform the administrative and legal landscape of the country to make it the most desired investment destination in the whole of Asia. In addition to its strategic location with access to key markets, industry-leading incentives and investment protection, educated and adaptable workforce, quality of life, and fast-developing world-class infrastructure. Improving ease of doing business has been identified as a key enabler. Ladies and gentlemen, in summary, I would like to draw your attention to a few salient points from our discussion. There is appreciation at the highest echelons of government 
of the paramount importance of improving all facets of the ease of doing business, affecting all stages in the life cycle of business enterprises as we embark on a decade of growth. We have been in the amber zone on this and much progress has been made over the last five years. From the top 100, our ambition is to land firmly in the green zone and position ourselves within the top 25 to 30 most business-friendly countries in the world. A critical analysis has been done of the areas for improvement. Realistic targets have been set, pragmatic steps have been taken, and many more are in the work in progress stage. This involves streamlining, simplification, and reduction of the number of processes, reducing the number of days from start to finish, and bringing about transparency for tracking, while minimizing costs. Firm plans are afoot to increase our rankings of the 10 indicators, where 40% of them will fall within the first 30 and the next 40% under 50. We've made great strides in this respect and quick wins which we've made over the last few months should see us move 20 notches up the scale very soon. Unfortunately, the Cut-off for the 2021 ranking was 1st of May, I believe. Some of it, some of those should get reflected in the 2021 ranking, while the others should reflect the following year. While all of these changes are taking place countrywide, further step improvements in the ease of doing business are expected in the special economic zone of the Colombo Port City, which I'm sure you have heard much about. The Kalampa Port City Economic Commission, with wide-ranging powers, ought to significantly reduce lead time in all aspects and thereby take its notional ranking to be on par with the global top 15 to 20. As we embark on a decade of growth, we pledge our commitment to making Sri Lanka to be one of the most business-friendly countries in the world. And we take this commitment very seriously. And we look forward to your partnership as we present our world to you. Welcome to Sri Lanka. Welcome to the next growth haven. Hope you found this segment useful. And we thank you for your participation and time. Up on that session on difference never experienced before. Providing solutions for passenger and logistics. Asset tracking. Supply chain management. Rental car services. Following up on that session on the ease of investment in Sri Lanka, let me invite Mr. Suresh Dimel, Chairman of the Export Development Board, to address you on Sri Lanka's export strategy and sectors in focus. Sri Lanka's export strategy and sectors in focus. Ayubowan, our strategic vision is Sri Lanka as an export hub driven by innovation and investment, guided by four strategic objectives to have a business enabling, predictable and transparent policy and regulatory framework that supports exports. Two, to strengthen Sri Lankan exporters' market entry and compliance capacities. Three, to become an efficient trade and logistics hub. Four, to drive export diversification through innovation and by strengthening emerging sector exports. Improve business environment through state-of-the-art logistics. Market intelligence, trade information and promotion national quality infrastructure, innovation, and entrepreneurship. 
Six focus sectors have been identified for innovation and investment. Information technology, business process management, electrical and electronic components, boat building, nautical tourism and related infrastructure, processed food and beverages, spices, concentrates and essential oils, and wellness tourism. Investment opportunities, I will focus on the six sectors that are thrust sectors. Information technology and business process management. Increasing IT related graduates by expanding tertiary and vocational learning and introducing distance learning programs. Set up universities, foreign satellite campuses in Sri Lanka to enhance advanced skill levels and local R&D capability. Increasing the offer of KPO services. Enlarging the market outreach to provide BPM services and technical support to large multinational corporations. Investment opportunities in electrical and electronic components. Manufacturing. Sri Lanka has become a key player within the South Asian region, which is a hotspot for electrical and electronic manufacturing. We have a young and tech-savvy workforce with specialized training in electrical manufacturing and together with good logistics connectivity makes Sri Lanka a promising location for the sector. Furthermore, this sector has already created a large number of employment opportunities within Sri Lanka. The salary scales are more attractive than other manufacturing industries. Therefore, a large talent pool with highly trainable youth and skilled professionals in the form of design and manufacturing engineers are available. Sri Lankan EEC companies can plug into global MNC supply chains, develop joint ventures and act as contract manufacturing companies doing more design-driven work in Sri Lanka. They can relocate component manufacturers to Sri Lanka to make use of the skilled and inexpensive workforce. Focusing on specific product lines such as specialized low volume, high value circuits and systems. Passive components. Electromechanical components and interconnection devices. Investment opportunities in boat building, nautical tourism and related infrastructure. We require a full range of services and infrastructure for boat building and boat repairs. Docking, assembling, refitting, maintenance, storage, and refueling for various types of boats. Expanding production of our recreational boats and yachts for export to EU market and emerging regional markets such as India, Maldives, the Far East, the Middle East and Africa. Nautical tourism infrastructure. We need boathouses, ramps, docks, refueling stations, marinas and marina services for yachts and pleasure boats. Investment opportunities in processed food and beverages. Post harvest technology, cold rooms, storage, processing facilities, packaging and transport. Agricultural extension services such as tissue culture labs, e-agriculture, digitalization, geographical information systems. Strengthen backward integration into supply chains. 
including establishment of export processing villages or zones and export houses, transfer of technology and skills and building infrastructure. Training on innovation agriculture technology. Good agricultural practices, good management practices, fair trade and best practices with a special focus on ecological and organic farming. Furthermore, we need to develop new products, value-added health foods and superfoods. Investment opportunities in spices, concentrates and essential oils. Establishment of export houses again for market linkages, post-harvest handling, processing, drying, sterilizing, storage, GMP, GAP, fair trade and technology skills transfer. Improved technologies for adding value to Sri Lankan spices. Technologies for minimizing post-harvest losses. Packaging. Organic certification. Mechanization such as for weeding and cinnamon peeling. Promote spices as a crop rotation mechanism to encourage production by farmers in non-spice cultivating areas. Investment opportunities in wellness tourism. Establish long-stay wellness resorts. Develop strong quality assurance mechanisms for existing German and Japanese markets. Diversify into new markets such as the UK, Scandinavia, Russia, Eastern Europe and business cities of the Middle East and the Far East. Diversify wellness from Ayurveda-based products into new products such as Shinrin Yoku and Herbal Gardens. Establish training schools to enhance authentic traditional knowledge as well as to develop new products. The National Trade Facilitation Agreement. Sri Lanka as a WTO member has ratified the Trade Facilitation Agreement in 2016. The trade facilitation agreement entered into force now and two-thirds of the members have domestically ratified a protocol of the amendment and ratified the W and notified the WTO of their acceptance of this protocol. Implementation of the WTO trade facilitation agreement has the potential to increase global merchandise exports by up to one trillion dollars per annum according to the WTO. TFA implementation boosts cross-border trade thereby creating favorable trading environment. Investors can benefit immensely out of this TFA. It's simple efficient, transparent and cost-effective, harmonizing the trading environments internationally. Sri Lanka has already implemented key commitments such as establishing the National Trade Facilitation Committee where all relevant border agencies are represented, establishing the Sri Lanka Trade Information Portal, establishing electronic payments, inquiry points in every border agency, and a number of expedited shipping and clearing, etc. By establishment of rapid scanners at the Colombo Harbour, and then establishing the national single window, now in implementation stage. Other advantages to invest in Sri Lanka. We are strategically located as a central hub to trade routes. Easy connectivity, reliable and quality manufacturers, EU GSP plus 
and UK GSP plus concessions, duty-free access to 7,200 products to the EU, market access through free trade agreements, FTAs, SAFTA, IFSTA, PSFTA, SLSTA and APTA. Indo-Lanka free trade agreement, duty-free access to India for 4,000 products. Pakistan Sri Lanka FTA, duty-free access to Pakistan for 4,000 products. Our current service exports, logistics, marine and offshore engineering, light engineering, construction services, education, financial services, BPM and BPO, lapidary and tourism. Marine resources, fisheries, as an island with a territorial sea of 21,500 square kilometers and an exclusive economic rights for an ocean area, 500,000 square kilometers and a coastline of 1,340 kilometers. Sri Lanka has a rich supply of fish and seafood. The fishing industry plays an important role in Sri Lanka's social and economic sectors. And the country is home to a large fisheries community who reside along the coastline. The country combines new technology with traditional knowledge and skills in maintaining quality and sustainability in the fishing industry. Current marine fisheries exports frozen and processed fish, tuna species, yellowfin and big guy, giant trevally, Spanish mackerel, wahoo, swordfish, dorado, etc. Crabs, shrimps, prawns, lobsters, mollusks, and then the farm-grown shrimps and prawns, farm-grown barramundi or sea bass. Inland fisheries, Sri Lanka has 103 perennial rivers, of which 23 river basins are larger than 500 square kilometers. Of the total area of about 280,000 hectares of inland water bodies, 160 hectares are lakes and ponds, while the rest, 120 hectares, consists of lagoons and marshlands. Inland reservoirs and tanks usually carry water all year round. At present, the inland water fishery is primarily for domestic consumption. Export aquaculture farm-grown products include freshwater shrimp and prawns, tilapia and barramundi, and ornamental fish. Current industrial exports apparel, which is 50% of our merchandise exports, coconut-based products, rubber-based products, plastics, gems and jewelry, mineral-based products, pharmaceuticals, boat building, petroleum products, electrical and electronic equipment. Current agricultural export, exports, tea, coconut, fruits and vegetables, cereals, coffee and cocoa, processed food, beverages, spices, essential oils and oleoresins, and animal feed. Sri Lanka has a very high quality ecological, organic, and single-origin food. Sri Lanka was colonized for its spices in ancient times. Spices, herbs, essential oils, and oleoresins, true Ceylon cinnamon, black and white pepper, cloves, nutmeg, mace, 
cardamom, vanilla, ginger, curcuma, turmeric, spice, mixers, and condiments are all the best in the world. Superfoods, moringa, jackfruit, soursop are very popular these days. Value-added teas, herbal teas, value-added coconut, such as virgin coconut oil, fruits and vegetables, traditional rice, processed food and beverages. We saw growth even during the pandemic time in this sector. The top 10 current export destinations, United States, United Kingdom, India, Germany, Italy, Belgium, Netherlands, China, Canada, and Turkey. Foreign exchange earnings in 2019, we saw almost 16 billion US dollars worth of exports. 2020, the export community was quite resilient in achieving the 16 million, almost uh, 14 million, uh, 14 billion US dollar uh, exports for the country during the pandemic. Sri Lanka Export Development Board, established as the executive body of the Export Development Council of Ministers, headed by His Excellency the President of Sri Lanka, the Sri Lanka Export Development Board, known as the EDB, is the apex organization responsible for development and promotion of exports while playing the role of a policy advisor advising the government on national export development policies to create a conducive environment for exports role of monitor monitoring the performance and function of the export sector as a promoter implementing product design market and other development programs to promote sri lanka's products and services facilitator serving as the focal point of export development facilitating and co coordinating export development activities with all stakeholders and as a knowledge provider providing advisory services and information with regard to all aspects of export business and advisory assistance to exporters. Today, the EDB has gone beyond its original responsibility as a trade promotion organization to multiple layers of countries' industrial, agriculture and service export ecosystem playing the role of a mentor and a facilitator in reaching new markets and identifying market and industry trends. EDB also creates opportunities for Sri Lankan small and medium enterprises to expand their businesses internationally, to earn foreign exchange and provide employment. EDB offers consultant services to SMEs located throughout the country and sponsors training programs designed for exporters and potential exporters. EDB's knowledge of the global and Sri Lankan marketplaces and the characteristics of multiple industries helps Sri Lankan exporters to expand their exports into appropriate markets. We work with 20 advisory committees to gain the industry knowledge which are comprised of over 100 private sector members. We also work with foreign missions, local and global, to get the market intelligence we require. We are there to support exporters and investors to invest in Sri Lanka. Thank you.
Welcome, welcome to the Paradise Island, Sri Lanka. Year 2021 to 2030 have been declared as Sri Lanka's growth decade, where we look to unleash our true potential. Sri Lanka is a country that has so much to offer, and we invite you to invest in Sri Lanka and to be a part of Sri Lanka's success story. Let me tell you why you should invest in Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka tourism. Sri Lanka is a global hub which is strategically located. Sri Lanka is a destination with diversity, authenticity and compactness. A paradise to discover with the highest density of waterfalls in the world with 350 waterfalls, more than 25,000 water bodies, 103 rivers, 33% of our island is forest area. Sri Lanka has 26 national parks, 8 UNESCO declared heritage sites. We are an year-round destination with amazing weather. Our nature, adventure, culture, heritage and food all contribute towards an authentic Asian experience. Sri Lanka is what Asia has to offer. Sri Lanka never went for mass scale tourism. We built our tourism on unique experiences. Sri Lanka has the highest HDI index in South Asia and one of the highest literate nations in Asia. We have also been recognized globally and as an admired destination in the world. Not only that, a five-year integrated global campaign is underway to reposition and brand Sri Lanka with a focused marketing approach to adopt with global campaign identifying strategic, emerging and mature markets to Sri Lanka. We are enhancing Sri Lanka's digital footprint globally through the global campaign. And for the first time, a five-year research roadmap has been implemented with the assistance of MDF Australia aid to enhance informed decision making for both the policymakers and the industry. During the pandemic, uh, when the world was closed, we live streamed our wildlife parks over nine days during COVID-19 to keep the dream alive. We are focusing on experiences in making the millennials and the post-COVID travelers. As you know, sustainable tourism is no longer an option. A green building concept is being adopted by Sri Lanka tourism, uh, which has become an absolute necessity for Sri Lanka tourism. The environment and sustainability is an important issue for Sri Lanka, as Sri Lanka is a small island. Uh, that is vulnerable to climate change with roughly 50% of our inhabitants living in coastal areas of the island. Also travelers, uh, the travelers are becoming more conscious of their travel footprint and it is essential for destinations to focus on the environment and sustainability to remain attractive to global travelers. We have commenced GSTS accreditation. Sri Lanka has recently banned uh, single-use plastic uh, we are looking to make some key destinations such as Sigiriya, which is a World Heritage Site, uh, as a first sustainable destination in Sri Lanka. New tourism investments are given sustainability guidelines. Uh, our ancient culture, our ancient architecture, our ancient customs, which are environmentally friendly uh, and sustainable, is really gaining a lot of new interest. Uh, Sri Lanka has traditional elements of design used for centuries. Social sustainability is also equally important. Uh, we are a multi-ethnic, multi-religion community with people from diverse cultural roots. Travelers find it important for the money they spend on their trips to filter back into the community. It will be of utmost importance to them to ensure that their travel footprint is minimized and their visit has a positive impact on the destination. 
Post pandemic, we will see a huge shift in people wanting to connect with communities and nature when traveling, which is, which is perfect uh, for Sri Lanka. Using these traditional systems and our traditional ways of living will benefit Sri Lanka post COVID more and more. For the first time, uh, Sri Lanka Tourism is implementing a travel app which is underway with the assistance of World Bank ADB, which is focused on enhancing the visitor's experience and improving the service quality. The app was developed following a benchmark exercise uh, on other travel apps. Uh, we believe ours will set a new standard. Over 5,000 sites island-wide have been compiled uh, permitting ticket purchasers, uh, event calendar, maps, tourist sites. Uh, we will incorporate a, a complaint management tool, uh, a survey, uh, emergency button connecting to the nearest police station should there be a need. Uh, we are improving customer experiences and thereby the quality standards. Uh, we continue to improve ourselves and we are a growth focused. So Sri Lanka is ready. Um, tourism investment process, we have streamlined the process completely. A master document for all approvals have been implemented as part of the US sale project. The master document has merged all government line agency requirements into one. Now it is one application when you invest in tourism. This resulted in an increase in investment approvals in tourism in 2020 over 2019. We have one stop unit that facilitates all tourism investments. In the past, some of the new experiences we approved during COVID uh, included a floating hotel built on water, a cable car in the hill country going over tea plantations and forests, uh, and approvals were given for wellness space and fully integrated boutique hotel complex. Sri Lanka's accommodation inventory will also continue to expand this year. We give a lot of invest incentives for investors. Uh, tourism is considered an export industry, hence zero VAT from 2020. Tax holidays and exemptions are provided by our Board of Investment. Uh, support also extended for import of raw materials for tourism projects. Support for visa issuance, for expat staff, uh, liquor licensing facilitation. Sri Lanka Tourism supports investors right throughout the process to revolve, uh, resolve regulatory issues relating to any type of approvals. Further, investment opportunities in tourism are wide. Um, Sri Lanka has a sea area with an economic zone of 550,000 square kilometers which is eight and a half times the land mass. Uh, sailing around the island is all year. Sri Lanka is an island of islands uh, with over 25 other islands to be explored by the visitor. Uh, Sri Lanka has unique maritime history with shipping trade and culture links with the world. And recently, uh, an underwater museum was built by the Sri Lankan Navy. This will also support the formation of coral reefs over time. A floating market was renovated and opened. Uh, tourism, for the first time, uh, is working to promote yachting and water-based tourism. Sri Lanka's indigenous Ayurveda has healed our communities for centuries. For the first time, global research has been commissioned and a campaign to be launched with the assistance of the European Union to promote wellness tourism and our indigenous Ayurveda. Our unique offering has resulted in film producers looking to do productions here. Hence, Sri Lanka Tourism stepped in and a single window approval scheme was created and been launched. And a help desk at Sri Lanka Tourism. There is over 1.5 million square feet of upcoming shopping malls in Colombo that will position as a premium shopping center. A VAT refund and $300 purchases have been approved to support retail tourism. As we are an island, airline connectivity is critical. During the last year, newer airlines were given land in rights to develop route connectivity. 
The airport expansion commenced to double capacity. More licenses were given to domestic flights. We have five international airports and nine domestic airports. The railways have also started to upgrade some carriages. We are creating a detailed land bank which is underway to assist investors. Kalpitya Island Resort has 12 islands owned by Sri Lanka available for investors to look to position mid to high end with possible minimum room rates and the ability for water bungalows previously not possible. Developing experience is critical. In the past, promotions have been based on countries. Now we are looking for experiences, whether it be wellness, religious tourism, our adventure, nautical tourism, aqua, sports tourism, medical tourism, our food, history and culture. Sri Lanka has now emerged as a destination where travelers have a, have a desire to look beyond the superficial elements and explore more the authentic, experience-driven route. Travelers used to in the past come only for our beaches, but now they know that we have so much more to offer. Our island is blessed with many unique experiences. Swimming with giant turtles, lounging on a yacht while watching whales and manta rays swim by, exploring ancient kingdoms, taking part in a traditional paddy harvest or mining for your own precious stones. These are some of the many experiences. We have compiled a comprehensive database with over 5,000 experiences and sites to explore. Whether it be hiking or camping, these experiences will be shared by the travel app in future. More so than ever before, diverse industries and se uh, sectors are now working closely with tourism, building unique experiences thus creating many opportunities in the industry to be explored by potential investors. Business meetings, mice and city tourism are strategic areas of interest for Sri Lanka tourism. Mice promotional approach will be changed to digital and reaching out to a more targeted audience. We are also working with many external experts and international funding agencies for support to promote mice tourism. Business events, combining with pleasure, are also a segment which we are focusing on. Infrastructure available to support mice-related events continue to expand. Sri Lanka has a name, particularly in the region, for wedding tourism. We will continue to expand in these theme weddings. There is much demand from the region. As Sri Lankans and Asians, we enjoy large weddings. Sri Lanka is equipped well to create a memorable weddings. Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka tourism has great potential. Acknowledging this potential, many international organizations have partnered with Sri Lanka tourism to support us unleash the best. Some of these projects include Visit Sri Lanka Travel App, Simplification of Tourism Investment Process, Tourism Satellite Accounting, technical assistance towards the new tourism act, classification of accommodation sector, converting the hotel school to a degree of audience status, uh, assisting with the technical assistance for marketing, procurement and media, design of a social protection system for tourism workforce, SME support, uh, training programs supporting women entrepreneurs in tourism, research on potential tourism segments, research roadmap, development, technical support towards the National Sustainable Destination Certification, promotion support for indigenous Ayurveda and wellness to name a few. All these international partnerships and support are evidence of our efforts being made by Sri Lanka tourism. They are also evident of our growth mindset and our growth plans. So Sri Lanka is ready for growth decade uh, we invite you uh, to be a part of it. Sri Lanka tourism is also aware of the global trends. We work to align our offering accordingly. One such is the Millennium Traveller, which is an important segment for us. More than ever before, this segment looks for authentic experiences, which fits in well with Sri Lanka as a multi-experiential destination. 
millennials travel with like-minded people rather than with family. Um, some have, uh, Sri Lanka has adventure, water sports, trekking, climbing, mountaineering. Millennials tend to move away from materialism and often choose to spend more money on experiences um, rather than possessions. So spending on unique experiences rather than cookie cutter products. So tree houses, camping, quirky products, local food as Sri Lanka is off the beaten track destinations. We have a great offering. Uh, Sri Lanka has many facets within the wellness tourism sphere. Uh, from the traditional Ayurveda wellness, meditation and yoga, to the more contemporary wellness, uh, you know, experiences such as walking through our forest to relax under a waterfall. Not forgetting, of course, our food, our culture and our customs. As technology plays an important role as well, there's never been, possibly never been a generation that is more connected uh, digitally savvy and demanding. Uh, smart technology, unique designs, high quality, local experience are imperative uh, for the millennial travelers. Our travel app will meet these needs. People are also in general embracing the work from anywhere concept uh, uh, with only requirement being a good Wi-Fi connection. Sri Lanka, we as a destination are positioned well to promote work from your own tropical paradise concept. Millennium travelers also generate share content, which is really uh, valuable. And Sri Lanka Tourism has, has our eye out on this critical and rewarding segment uh, along with the emerging Generation Z. Another important segment is the post-COVID traveler who will look to connect with nature. Sri Lanka has 26 national parks, 33% of our island is forest area, we have the highest waterfall density with 103 rivers, with amazing weather all year round, 21,500 kilo square kilometers of territorial water with resources almost untouched. Sri Lanka is a paradise for post-COVID traveler. Post-COVID traveler will look for health and well-being. Sri Lanka with our indigenous Ayurveda is uniquely placed. Our food known to build immunity. Our ancient customs and practices will be shared with the world. And our meditation and yoga retreats will help them unwind. Post-COVID, travelers will also look for space. Sri Lanka never went for mass scale tourism. We pitch for authentic experiences where you can connect with the community. With the many lockdowns throughout the world due to the pandemic, people have been restless. And with the opportunity to arise for travel, recent research shows that the trend is going to be travel big. Also, travelers are gravitating more towards the big idea, bucket list trips, unique experiences. This will result in growth in nature-based tourism, camping, trekking, experience-based sustainable travel. Travelers may be f making fewer trips per year. However, when they do travel, they will probably invest the time and money in long-haul travel and stay in one destination for longer periods of time. Sri Lanka really has everything a post-COVID traveler is looking for. Sri Lanka is a destination with much potential waiting to be unleashed. With improved investment facilitation, sustainability and technology focus, a shift towards tourism experiences, the repositioning in initiatives, infrastructure development with an able workforce. Sri Lanka is ready. Sri Lanka is ready for investments. Sri Lanka is ready for growth. Sri Lanka is everything that Asia has to offer. Invest in Sri Lanka. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah! Uh -huh.